Well, I think one issue that, um, and I'm not sure there's a solution to this, it's commercialism. And uh, that's led to a softening of the news and an attempt basically to go after the marginal consumer uh, and to some degree neglecting the core consumer, the, the people who are there because they're interested in public affairs. Uh, I think they get underserved as a result of that. So you have this real tension between what's doing well in the market and what's kind of doing well in terms of the press's civic responsibility. Um, but a more concrete problem is he said, she said journalism. Um, and it kind of comes out of the old model uh, of reporting, the objective model, uh, and uh, which says you have to be fair to both sides. Um, and so you take something from this side and, and you juxtapose it with something from this side uh, and your work is done. Uh, the, that works fine if in fact uh, the people who are providing those quotes you know, are playing it straight with the, with the public. Uh, but when they begin to play fast and loose with the facts, uh, then the journalist becomes complicit uh, in the deception. And uh, increasingly that's been the case. Uh, we know the roots of it. A lot of it has to do with the heightened level of party polarization in the country and, uh, and the tactics that surround uh, that partisanship. I mean, that's a large part of it. Um, and then there's always a temptation for those in politics uh, you know, for personal advantage. And, um, and if it works, they'll use it. Uh, and then if you look at it from the perspective of the journalist, uh, often it works for them as well because it's controversy. And there's news in controversy and it puts them at the center of these controversies. So uh, the incentives uh, for journalists and politicians uh, can work in ways that work against the best interests of the public. I think quite. I mean, uh, one can make, have a good argument about who started this. Um, and uh, as I read the historical evidence, uh, journalists actually started it uh, when they went for the attack sound bites uh, after Watergate in Vietnam and basically kind of turned on the politicians. Uh, and then politicians responded by providing exactly those types of sound bites because they, they found personal and partisan advantage in doing so. Uh, and then you got in, get into what uh, uh, the ethicist Cicely Bach calls the vicious circle. Uh, and, uh, you know, they go at each other. Uh, it works for both. Uh, and yet it, it brings down uh, the level of public discourse uh, and works to the disadvantage of the public. So I'm not sure it's helpful uh, to kind of point fingers at who started this darn thing. Uh, but we're now trapped in it, uh, and we need to find a way out of it. Uh, and one advantage of knowledge-based journalism, uh, it provides journalists with a different kind of source, uh, that they don't have to always turn to the official source or the partisan source or the self-interested source. Uh, they can go to, um, to knowledge and uh, what we know about the way the world looks uh, and bring that kind of information into their stories in, instead of the... Uh, the artificial portrayals of reality that so often get in there because of the sound bites. Well, it's tricky. I mean, I do think this whole th question about how news outlets think about audiences is, is tricky because uh, some people, most people like hard news. Uh, some people like soft news. Uh, uh, there are times when a blend of the two uh, maximizes your audience. So in that sense, it's economically advantageous. Uh, the difficulty is increasingly is trying to satisfy both of those audiences because they do uh, have a preference for a different kind of news. And uh, as the, we've had this fragmentation going on in the news system, I think increasingly uh, it's in the self-interest of news organizations to kind of figure out what their audience is uh, and to deliver the product that they like. And a good example of that, I think, is National Public Radio, which has run counter to all of the audience trends by growing audience like crazy over the last couple of decades. And they've done it by sort of deciding what their audience is and what kind of news their audience is interested in and not doing the other stuff. Uh, and I think that's, that's a good way to, to think about it. But, you know, I think there's some real opportunities out there that are being missed. Uh, and journalists are quite right in saying that the public is not interested in dry issue articles. They're not. Uh, but that doesn't mean they're not interested in issues or that they're not interested in public policy problems. They are. 
Uh, and the challenge for the journalist is to how to tell those stories in a compelling way and to bring the public policy aspect into the stories and also to reveal to the audience uh, its stake uh, in those disputes.